Hi guys, it's Asia Barreto in the Virgin Islands. I'm going to walk you through four different graphical interfaces for different synthesizers in Logic Pro X. So I have a new, um, I have a new project opened and I am in the side panel with all of the instruments and here as you can see it's a synthesizer and what it does is provides a lot of options that are already preset. So you can always play with them through here. But if you want to open up the graphical interfaces, they're going to be on your track list. They're going to be listed as an effect. So you click there, and that's where you get to see the synthesizer. So I'll walk through this one. This is an ES2. Um, as you can see, it's kind of it's pretty complex, but it's laid out similarly um, in terms of the oscillator being over here. So as you can see, you can modify the waveform and their shapes over here and some other parameters. Um, the filter is going to be over here. So you have the cutoff frequency and the resonance over here, the drive, um, and a few other parameters here as well that you can modify in the middle. Um, as we move down below, you'll see the LFO is going to be over here. And this is where you modify the ADSR. Um, and so you have that, you know, the, that envelope um, modification option that's going to be down here. The amplifier is going to be um, up top here, where it says intensity from zero to full um, and volume. And you can also modify the distortion and put some effects like chorus, flanger, phaser, um, and so on. So that's kind of a basic overview where the um, five most important parameters are going to be. And you can see it's um, pretty complex so you can make other modifications to your synth over here as well. So let's go to another interface. Um, let's go right up into... Okay, let's go to ES1 since we were at ES2. So this is another version probably from the same um, software company and it looks a little bit more simplistic. So as you can see the oscillator is here and it's clearly marked. The filter is going to be in the middle, um, and just as we learned in our Coursera course, 24 decibels is kind of um, the, I guess, the default setting, and you can always modify it right here. Um, and you have your cutoff frequency that you can modify up top here, and the resonance down here. The drive and the key are also other parameters. Here we have the amplifier, um, so, you know, zero to full. And, you know, you make those modifications right here on the side. Down here we have your low frequency oscillator. And your envelope is right here. And you can also modify your attack, delay, sustain, and release as well. Um, so that's ES1 in Logic Pro X. And let's check out two more. Let's go down to our retro synth. Okay. Here we have the oscillator. So this one is um, clearly marked, so it's easy to understand where everything is. Oscillator is over here. You can modify your shapes here. Um, looks like you can balance between two different oscillators, which is kind of, which is nice. Um, so you can set the, you know, the fader to the setting that you want to get the proper mix. You have the filter, which is in the middle. And it looks like this is modifying the filter. It's like an envelope for the filter. So it's not for the um, you know, for the sound itself, but you can modify the resonance in here. And then and then the amplifier is gonna be right there, and the effect is gonna be on the side. As you look below, the LFO is gonna be at the bottom, and the filter envelope and the amplifier envelope is gonna be right on the lower right hand side. So as you can kind of see, the synthesizers are are modeled rather similarly as um as was suggested in the Coursera course, we have the oscillator, the filter, the amplifier on the top, and the LFO and the envelopes on the bottom. So that is the retro synth in your Logic Pro X. And lastly, let's look at one more. And this one to me is the most daunting, but um, there's a lot of possibilities. This is a sculpture. This is a modeling synth. So this one, um, I had a bit of trouble figuring out where everything was, but it looks like how they did it was they actually tried to model after different string sounds. Um, so it's a modeling synth where they already have a lot of sounds preset 
as you can see the oscillator is going to be over here but it's modeled as like you can see the pickup so it's it's modeling after certain types of sounds you can also modify what material the string is that you use from steel um the material that i guess the sound that you're making is played on steel nylon wood glass they have the stiffness um the filter parameters are going to be you know your cutoff your resonance your key all of that stuff is still the same i had the hardest time figuring out exactly what all of this stuff meant over here because it wasn't your standard you know oscillator kind of setup but you're modifying the different parameters of the waveform um, over here like you know such as the pickup and it's a little bit different because it's a modeling synth and it's not like a subtractive synth so um, you know this is has a lot has different uses um, and possibilities but the setup is uh, um, rather similar to the other ones in that you're going to modify the wave shape and the different parameters here. Um, on the left side, you have your timber, your strength, your variation, and you're modeling um, different sounds. So you have the pickup here, and it's just something to play with and to learn more about, really and truly. Um, the filter is going to be over here. You have your ADSR is going to be on the side, so you have you can modify... Um, some of this, but this is actually related to your amplifier. So the level limiter is going to be your amplifier. So this is the amplifier over here. As we go down here, you have your LFO, and that's um, you know in a similar place to the other ones. And down here, you could modify between um, your first and second option. They also have vibrato and jitter and other parameters down here. So you can see this is pretty complex. Really trying to model real life sounds. Um, in the middle here, this is actually like a morph button, so you can drag, um, you know, between different sounds by adjusting the coordinate point on an X and Y axis to kind of get, um, you know, different sounds that you're looking for. And then on the bottom, you have your, you know, your envelope that is modeled as this, you know, graph that you can drag and drop different points for your attack, your release in your sustain. I'm sorry, I said that in a, in a wrong order. Your attack, your delay, your sustain, and your release. Um, so that's an overview. I know some of these are a little bit more complicated and, you know, I'm going to learn more about them and, you know, you can play around with them. But, um, you know, hopefully you can, you know, take some of the stuff that you've seen here and apply it to your DAW. Or if you have Logic Pro X, you can dig in and get your fingers um, you know, get your hands dirty and start making some cool sounds. So thank you so much for watching my tutorial and I hope you have a blessed day.